So welcome to this talk on uh, properties, uh, property based testing with Elixir. Um, my name is Roland. I'm a director of engineering at Community, and I'm also the, the extreme digital nomad. I write code always and everywhere. This is my van. If you want to talk about community or extreme digital nomading, come and see me afterwards. Um, lightning talks can be either enlightening or lightning fast. Uh, I'm totally aware that I am between you and the beers, so uh, I try. <laughs> I try to do both here. In 1973, the rock group Focus was asked to perform their song Hocus Pocus on NBC Midnight Live. The song is almost seven minutes long. Uh, the slot they got was four minutes, 30 seconds. They did not shorten the song. They played it faster, much faster. And the performance was enlightening. So let's go. Um, motivation, um, when we do testing, we obviously have input values and we have a function, we get output, and we are looking for valid test cases, invalid test cases, edge cases. Uh, we are looking for good code coverage. Um, in 80% of the cases, the unit testing that you do will give you 80% of the value and uh, that should be good enough. But in some cases, you can actually test something that is much more interesting and better uh, and that is you can actually test all valid input values through the function against a set of properties that the output should adhere to. Yeah? So that is very valuable and actually very low maintenance and creates good code coverage. So meet property-based testing. Uh, property-based testing is not new. It was invented a very long time ago, and the most famous implementation is by a very famous uh, computer scientist called John Hughes from 1999 in Haskell for Haskell, and um, is called QuickCheck. Uh, there are other implementations of property-based testing frameworks, uh, QuickCheck like for Scala, Clojure, Rust, Go, uh, and also for Elixir. Uh, the two big ones for Elixir is prop check, which is a wrapper around prop err, uh, which is the uh, property-based uh, testing framework for Erlang. Uh, and then there is also stream data by Andreas, uh, Andrea Leopardi. The two main concepts in every one of these property-based um, the testing frameworks are generators and properties. Generators create the values, properties check that um, the properties are, um, are, are good. Um, they actually work together to create a very nice feature of the frameworks. It's called shrinking because sooner or later, one of the tests will fail, but uh, it will probably fail with a very complicated set of input values. Shrinking actually goes backwards and tries to find the simplest possible set of input values that makes the test fail. Yeah? Very valuable feature and um, uh, something to think about. So let's do a quick example here. Pascal's triangle. Some people might have seen that. Every row is uh, the sum of uh, the two values in the row above. Yeah? And it creates a triangular array of binomial coefficients coefficients, coefficients, and uh, the triangle has a couple of very interesting properties. Every row has one element more than the previous row. Every row is a palindrome, yeah? uh, and the sum of all elements in a given row is double the sum of all elements in the previous row. Yeah? There are much more properties you can, let's say, an exercise for the reader if you want. Um, so let's talk about palindromes. I give you five seconds. So, three, two, one, um, and um, let's uh, dive into some live coding. Let's let me switch the laptop. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, let's take a look at that. Um, let's uh, let's take a look at this um, uh, uh, at the um, at the unit test here, and we have uh, a nice unit test for row number four, which should let's say return this set of values. So far, so good. Um, we obviously want to test um, maybe uh, some edge cases, like what happens on row zero or the first row here, and that should obviously work. Um, but then we can also try to say row 99 uh, should be a palindrome. Yeah? But that's not really what we want. What we actually want is uh, we want to test a property. And we want to test the property that for all positive integers, um, the 
resulting array of numbers is actually a palindrome. Yeah? So, and if we run this, long and behold, suddenly the test fails. Yeah? And it basically gives us a couple of very interesting inf uh, numbers here. The first one is it had 58 successful runs. Yeah, so it was te already testing for a while. Yeah, but then suddenly, when it was trying um, 42, um, it um, failed yeah, because uh, whatever it got back was not a palindrome. Yeah, so um, if we take a look at the at the code here, then we can immediately see that Roland implemented a bug. Yeah, so. <laughs> And uh, we can remove that bug and everything will be fine and the world is going to be a better place. Yeah? So if you want to do property-based testing, um, do not force it. Yeah? it. It works well for a subset of problem domains, mainly math problems, pure functions. Uh, do not look at it as an alternative for your pr uh, traditional unit testing, but more as a way to complement your existing unit testing and make it more comprehensive, more complete and easier to maintain. Uh, last key takeaway is uh, if you want to learn more about this and all of the other ways to do testing, just buy the book from Andrea and Jeffrey. Yeah? And um, otherwise, um, sleep well tonight. <laughs>